So can you tell me what you're here doing at the protest at VCU? Well, actually, I was just in the Starbucks uh, just having some coffee, and I came outside to all of it. Um, I don't agree with it. I think that the, uh, the ban is perfectly acceptable for right now. What do you think uh, the ban is acceptable? Well, we have a vested interest in protecting the security of our, of our citizens. Uh, that's what it does. It's not a ban on a, on a religious people. It's no ban on Muslims. It's just a ban on uh, immigration from certain areas. And uh, I believe that's perfectly acceptable. Right. If we want to talk about the facts, uh, nowhere in the executive order did it mention Muslim countries. Right. Right. Correct. And a lot of the people here are, are unaware that the person who actually put this stuff into place was Obama in Correct. 2015. Right. Correct. And the Travel uh, Terrorist Prevention Act. Yep. Right. So he selected those countries himself. Yep. Uh, what? Uh, Iraq, Iran, uh, Libya, Somalia, uh, Syria, Yemen, Sudan, yep. right? All those is that Obama selected himself. It's yes. not like Trump picking from a name from a hat, right? Right. Uh, so seven seven countries that are Muslim, but there yep. are, what, 56 Muslims all over the world, so it's not like he put a ban on all of them to say that he's Islamophobic, Correct. right? Um, now, uh, so your position then is that uh, it's okay then to put a ban on people coming in, right? For immigration purposes. For immigration. Not, not necessarily on a, uh, on a religious point of view or, or on a certain... You know, it'd be unconstitutional to have a ban on, uh, you know, Arabs as a race or, you know, Muslims or, or Jews as a, as a certain uh, ethnic religion. Group. Yeah, yeah, ethnic yeah. group. Um, but as far as just immigration from the territories where there has been terrorism uh, from refugees in the United States dur uh, from the refugee program, I believe it's perfectly acceptable. Okay. Now, what do you think, though? When you look at uh, the United States, right, mm -hmm. uh, and the boundaries and the borders that it creates, though. Yes. Um, now these are, you can say, public borders, though, right? These are the, the borders belong to that fictional entity called the government. Right? Uh, correct. So they're yeah. not. So they're not your private borders, like your home. You have your fence that demarcate your property, right. right? You're allowed to say whatever you want in regards to who's allowed to come in on your property yep. for your house, or if you have unwanted guests to say, yeah, you know. I lock the door at night. Right, you lock yeah. the door, <laughs> you can leave, right? Exactly. Uh, I think those kind of property lines mm -hmm. uh, and whatever you want to say of, of permitting entry or not mm -hmm. is perfectly acceptable. But when you look at uh, government though, yep. uh, these are not private borders, mm -hmm. right? These are technically uh, borders that government doesn't allow people to homestead in those areas, right? Mm -hmm. uh, public land is not really, um, it's not privatized because government prevents people from homesteading those lands. Gotcha. Right? So then I can't really then say that the government should prevent people from crossing these borders because technically it's not privatized borders. They're not private borders, right? But one of the largest reasons for the government and one of the reasons that I believe that the government should still be around is because it has a vested interest in protecting its citizens. When doing so, you have to protect the borders. You have to protect the boundaries that is your country. Uh, within the country, there are certain laws and regulations that you must abide by when you're a citizen. We're okay. a, a representative republic underneath the Constitution of the United States. Uh, in order for the government to play a role in giving us those those freedoms, uh, we have to protect those freedoms at all costs. Now, a citizen would be defined, would you say this is an accepted definition of mm -hmm. a citizen? You give up certain uh, rights, right, freedoms to the body politic that is the state or government, and in return you're provided protection. Well, I don't believe when I don't believe with that de uh, definition. Um, How would you define the, a citizen? The Constitution of the United States is not rights that are endowed by the government, the rights that are endowed by God. Uh, a definition of a right is a, uh, a right that predetermined or predates government before government. Right. They believe that it's for God. So negative um, rights, not positive rights. No, they're still positive rights. Then, how, how would they be negative rights? Well, positive rights would be I have a right to something, but that infringes on the labor of someone else to provide it for you, right? A right to health care infringes on doctors to have to provide it for you, right? No, I, I agree. I, I agree that health care isn't a right. Uh, you, know, you obviously don't have a right to somebody else's labor. But rights that are, you know, freedom of speech, uh, you know, freedom to protect yourself, uh, things like that, um, those actually don't have any sort of, um, you're not por or forcing anything on somebody else. Right. Those are all individual rights. And then from here, you're saying that government protects these rights, right? Correct. Uh, now, what if I were to tell you then that they don't? And that many Supreme Court cases, like in Winnebago versus East Cheney County, Warren versus District of Columbia, mm -hmm. many Supreme Court judges have decreed that they have no obligation to protect their life, liberty, or property. 
Uh, I would have to look at those cases. Yeah, I've never, yeah. I've never heard of them before, yeah. but um, I'm not sure how they wouldn't have a right to protect. I, I, I know that the ones that say that the police doesn't necessarily have, uh, they're not, you know, bound by law to have to protect you in certain situations. So you're forced to pay for a monopolized government service mm -hmm. of security, in which they don't have to provide. Can you imagine if that was the kind of service you got from like Netflix? <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll stream you that movie when we feel like it. Uh. Well, I don't, I don't think that the government has to provide everything for the. Obviously, I believe that if you're left alone to your own individual liberties and freedoms, that you're going to prosper yourself. Right. Um, as far as a macroeconomic point of view, uh, the government still does have a role among its citizens to provide protection uh, by threat of outside sources. Right. So. All right, so Supreme Court rulings aside, that mm -hmm. they've said from, from their own word of mouth that right. uh, there's no protection. Now, how can government then make the claim that we're here to protect your property when they must first rob you of that property through taxation? Right, there's a contradiction there. Because you can't say, you can't make the claim that you're going to do good when you first have to do acts of evil and then saying that the money we're going to take that from you is going to help you out. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, taxes are uh, yeah. a gangster shakedown, pretty yes, much. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, and I agree, I agree, but I still believe that some gangster shakedowns are useful. Uh, um, I, I believe that, uh, obviously, you know, I'm don't, I don't want to pay a tax for, uh, you know, health care, for the right of health care to somebody else, because, you know, I, that's you don't have a right to somebody else's labor. All right. um, but I'm, I, I still believe that there's a proper role in taxing people uh, to allow for the protection uh, of all people. Um, but don't you think then, so you're, so you come from a conservative view, right? Yeah. Republican? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so then you see then that the reason you don't want government to be involved in the health care is because... Uh, you don't have a right to somebody else's labor. Right. Now, if that is a fundamental principle then, mm -hmm. right, then that must also include an, any other kind of right, right to security then. You don't have the right to someone else's labor to pay for someone else's security. Or you don't have a right to someone else's labor to pay for anything then, right? It must be consistent with these principles or they're just preferences. They're not morals or uh, virtues or values that you actually mm -hmm. hold to be consistent, right? Um, I would say then, if you look at government and why they shouldn't be involved in X, Y, and Z, you right. must go all the way down to all platforms of government services that mm -hmm. are monopolized and say, look, the market can provide these services at a much better rate and that you'll find will allow market competition mm -hmm. that always lowers prices, improves right. its uh, quality, right? Um, and any good in services. So not, mm -hmm. Government is not a magical word that people utter and then finally, you know, <laughs> no, <laughs> you have I, it, right? I, yeah, I can understand that. No, I, I, I agree that government's definitely not a fix-all for everything. Um, I think that there would be a lot of trouble trying to privatize the security of an entire nation like that. Um, whereas I can understand the privatization of a lot of different markets, uh, I still believe that the government has a vested interest in protecting its citizens. I still believe that that plays a, a larger role in, in uh, you know, the global markets, the entire role of the United States and on a global scale. Um, you know, whether people want to admit it or not, our military is the greatest peacekeeping organization in the United States or in the world. How uh, many, our, how our many countries uh, did Obama bomb? Oh, he's bombed a lot. Trust me, I'm not. Seven, right? That's why I find this whole thing I'm, hypocritical. I don't think the military has done anything to defend our freedoms. I was in the military myself, too. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that the mission has failed, right? The illusion that we're going out there to defend our freedoms when it's here at home, where we're losing it. Overseas, drone bombing those countries, those seven countries, eight countries, mm -hmm. and thousands of civilians murdered. Of yep. course, they call it a collateral damage. Right, right, right. right, right. Yeah, you call it by a different name. We yep. don't want to call it theft, we'll call it taxes. We don't yep. want to call it uh, organized, uh, like mass murder, we'll call it organized war, right? Yep. Um, so I think the best way to kind of proceed forward is calling things by its true name, and you see taxation yep. as a gangster shakedown, yep. then it all has to be gangster shakedowns, right? It yep. all has to be theft. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think any good could ever arise from stealing from anyone and saying that I'm, I know how better to spend your money, <laughs> right? Yeah, but the, the, I think that the, the, the way to kind of look at it too is that um, even though the government doesn't necessarily supply us with our freedoms, um, they do allow us to live in a country that allows those freedoms, that protects them in some certain way by saying that because you're in this country, you're allowed to have these freedoms. Because you're born here, you're allowed to have these freedoms. Like what? Uh, well, like like freedom of speech. And, that's, and that's everywhere. South America has that. Europe has that. That's well, there, a there's there's a lot of uh, of. I, I I know that there's there's a lot of freedom of speech in other countries, but the freedom in other countries isn't anywhere close to the freedoms that are in this country. And we still are the only country that was created to show that the that the, our freedoms are not endowed by government, they're endowed by God.
which allows us to have those freedoms. When those freedoms are given to us, we're allowed to prosper in a nation that is uh, safe and allows for individual liberty, um, you know, the, um, uh, and at least before it used to have, uh, you know, individual morality. Um, so when you allow the citizens to have these freedoms and to prosper and grow, um, they create everything around you. So all of this was, was created because we're able to have our freedoms, because we're able to pursue our goals, pursue our dreams. Um, I would say that's the result of uh, what's left of capitalism. Yeah, right? well, yeah, well, the that's... The capital and saving capital and right. investing and... Well, that's, I, I believe that... The, that had nothing to do with government, <laughs> though. <laughs> well, yeah, but I'm saying that, that when the government uh, allows that protection of us, we're allowed to prosper and grow. But they can't protect you if they have to rob you first. They can't claim that it's protecting you. Well, they can still protect you even if they rob you. A gangster shakedown, you can take your money from somebody, but that gangster can still come by and protect you if somebody else is threatening but you. you. Right, so you recognize that the government as a criminal gang then. Now, would you not then advocate uh, market competition providing security in, in all facets and levels, right? Well, I believe that you can have market competition to provide security. I, I don't believe that it's going to be able to be performed on a global scale. Well, well we, and, and, um, and we're talking about like in the just geographic region and the way that global scale could be, right? Yeah. We're no, we're no, I don't advocate for abolition of government just here, but all over the world, right. markets to be liberated. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, have you ever heard of the Pinkertons? No. The Pinkertons was an organization. They, it's the, uh, the organization that the FBI came from. Right. This is a private organization, capitalist organization, before they started getting in bed with the government, but they had more armed people doing investigative work, catching mm -hmm. bad guys and train robbers more people employed than the United States military combined at that time mm -hmm. in the 1800s. So you had one private organization that had mm -hmm. more people employed, armed people, catching bad guys, protecting property rights than the United States military. They never conquered like cities or counties or right. anything like that because their services was like a uh, subscription-based fee, right? Yep. There you pay for the services. It's not based gotcha. by taxes, right? Yep. So there are examples of like the market can produce this. You go right. to Disney World, you go to a mall, you go to a nightclub. Uh, gated communities have security, Yep. right? Um, now, it, then it shouldn't be difficult then to see that if, if the market can't produce this, then the market could also produce this in a mass scale if the government was out of the way, right? If the government wasn't taking like nearly 40% of their income through yep. taxes, that's a lot to invest and grow. And that is a lot to invest and grow. Um, I would say that the 1800s is a, a little bit different time than what it is now. Obviously, we have a lot more different threats now sure. than what we did back then. And there's a lot more of a, a global population than there is now. Um, whereas I do understand that private organizations can provide security at a certain rate. Um, I still believe that there's a lot more facets to it than um, than what people would perceive and that the government still does have a certain role in providing those those organizations um, you could you I mean you have the entire intelligence community of the government that's here and abroad but the one that said that uh, the Trump pistol is uh, on that yeah <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah great intelligence work there right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not everybody in the intelligence agency is going to be very smart about everything. Or the one that Edward Snowden got away from. So look, this is they're doing a lot of evil things here, right? Yep. Right. So, you know, I can't really say that they're like uh, independent in terms like they're going to help us out with they all work for the government, mm -hmm. right? It's like when you go to court, the police works for the uh, for the government, the judge works for the government, the prosecutor works for the government, the defend prosec uh, defender lawyer that they give you if you uh, if you can't provide one for yourself right. works for the government. Right. Uh, it's not impartial in that matter, yeah. right? So I can't really say that they really generally have my interests uh, and I guess in their mind. For yeah, them. no, I, I think that a lot of times you are going to find that people have their own individual interests. Uh, I mean, you've seen it seen it countless times. I still believe that there are good-hearted people that are going to have the interests of the United States people, um, especially those fighting overseas who do it, you know, on a daily basis to protect our our freedoms. They don't. I was in the military. <laughs> I'm saying they weren't. They don't. Well, they don't. I, 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 the military, I believe, still does fight to protect the freedoms. Then they will be the, here, or they'll be fighting for the freedoms, not overseas. I think they've uh, they've been tricked, right? Mm -hmm. They're saying that the enemy is out there, but they're not. It's here. I, I, Every I, law is a regulation restricting right. what you can do with your property, right? Right. Well, uh, I believe sometimes that's true that that they are tricked into thinking that a threat isn't a threat. I still believe, though, is that the, the best policy is to find the threat before it happens and take care of it, rather than let the threat take care of you first before you go after it. The threat it. here, I would say, are like uh, the millions of people locked up in cages for victimless crimes. That's a big threat. Millions of people. <laughs> they're they're no, locking up no, prisoners they're... here more than the gulags of communist Russia. Are you talking about more of like like uh, drug crimes yeah, and, and, yeah, and nonviolent crimes, crimes right, and yeah. things like that? That's... Well, I agree with that on a point. I'm more of a libertarian when it comes to you know decriminalization of, of you know drugs and, and things like that. I helped Portugal 10 years ago. Yeah. The only thing that I can say 
to that point uh, as far as decriminalization of, of drugs. Um, I think that we should probably get rid of a welfare state in the first place before we start decriminalizing drugs. A, a lot of stuff, yeah. Yeah, to just kind of allow it to be a, a more of an individual liberty thing than rather than having taxpayer dollars go to our pro, uh, towards a program that could potentially fund people right. who are on drugs. Um, so I was going to give you a card. Oh, oh I, I already gave you, gave you one. one. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, so the organization we're with is Liberty yeah. RVA. It's a non-political. It's a okay. free market. You're part of the free market, yep. right? I can see yeah. that, right? Free market capitalism. Uh, but we, we want to go all the way with free market capitalism, right? Gotcha. When we say we respect property rights, we advocate for it, yep. we mean it. Okay. Uh, we don't have, like, buts, right? It's like, right. but, go, yeah. right, but, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. right. Um, and I think that's, like, the sole focus of what capitalism should be today, right? Uh, in terms of respect for property rights. And what yeah. you create and, and your labor, and it's yours, right? Yep. Uh, and no one has any right to infringe upon that or take any piece, whether it's 5% or 10% or nearly <laughs> half of that, right? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we're Richmond's uh, capitalist group here. Okay, cool. Uh, definitely awesome. check us out. Uh, yeah, I think we have a lot more in common than uh, all these people do. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, and that's uh, that's the thing about it. Uh, hopefully we'll see like a lot of the, the anger that they have here. It, goes on consistently even after Trump, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, because, like, where were they during Obama's reign, right? Or when he when was he banned Iraq refugees in 2011. Right, or right, when he right. dropped 30,000 bombs in 2016 on seven different Muslim countries. Right, right. So I don't think that they actually care about it. I think that they're just out here protesting against somebody they don't like. Right. So we'll see. <laughs> I think uh, over time, maybe helping with the consistency and reminding them this sort of stuff. Yep. And then we could be just as strong after Trump yeah. and who regardless who's sitting on that throne. Oh right? yeah, always always keep the president's feet to the fire regardless yes. of who it is. Right. If you don't like him, if you like him, keep him to the feet to the fire. If you don't like him, keep it to their feet to or the fire. Or work Game of Thrones style and try to abolish that seat of power. <laughs> well, it's good talking to you, man. Yeah, it's good talking to you too. Appreciate it. Yeah, have a good rest of the day, guys. You too.